I'm glad you're here tonight, and I know you've been an encouragement to your pastor by being here, that, that's, and that is an important ministry that God's people uh, provide. And uh, I was in a missions conference, and the pastor in the conference came to me, and he said, Brother Bigham, he said, my people won't fill out the cards. They won't fill out the cards. Now, they'll give to missions, but they won't fill out the cards. He said, can you say something? that will maybe get them to fill out the cards. And so I spoke to them about it, but the biggest reason I said, I felt like they, that they ought to fill out the cards is look, if it encourages my preacher, I'm filling out a card. If, if it does nothing else, if, if it encourages my pastor, I'm filling out the card. And, um, and we have that responsibility to be an encouragement. I want you to meet me in Psalm 67. Psalm 67 tonight, and I want to bring you uh, three truths essential to our success in God's program. Three truths essential to our success in God's program. Three things we need to understand and keep in mind if we want to be successful in God's program. Some pr pastor has said, and I think it's a good question, he said, imagine, I want, to, I want you to calm down and listen to this, imagine arriving in heaven as a believer, having been wildly successful, enormously successful in something that God cares very little about. You've got a problem. You spent your life and something that God cares little about. So we need to, at this point in our life, find out what's important to God and then commit to it. And Psalm 67 gives these three truths. If you're able, as we read Psalm 67, if you would stand, please. Psalm 67, we'll read the entire chapter, seven verses. He says, God be merciful unto us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us, Selah, that thy way may be known upon earth, thy saving health among all nations. Let the people praise thee, O God, let all the people praise thee. O let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for thou shalt judge the people righteously and govern the nations upon earth, Selah. Let the people praise thee, O God, let all the people praise thee. Then shall the earth yield her increase, and God, even our own God, shall bless us. God shall bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Our Heavenly Father, we're grateful tonight to be your children. We reckon that that's true because of your grace, the sacrifice of your Son, and uh, we're, we're, you're drawing us to yourself, and we rejoice in it tonight. We're grateful for it. And after such a, such a uh, sacrifice to redeem us, we should uh, be concerned and not have to be prodded and poked and pushed uh, to give our lives to you and service to you. So help us tonight as we try to study these three truths that will help us be successful at something you care about. And we'll rejoice in it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Be seated if you will. The first thing I see, the first thought I have is from verse 1. And it's an encouraging thought. It lets me know that asking for God for His blessings is acceptable. Asking God for His blessings is acceptable. Look what he says in verse 1. God be merciful unto us and bless us. Bless us. You know, I've often been bothered when I would come before the Lord seeking His blessings because I would be mindful of those who haven't been blessed as much as I have. And here I am asking for more 
asking for blessings, and I'm conscious of the fact that there are others who seemingly have so much less and seemingly are so much blessed, so, so less blessed, and so I start feeling guilty. But in here, he encourages us and he prays unapologetically and unashamedly for God's blessings. And I think there's a couple reasons here that it's okay to ask for God's blessings. It's okay to ask for God's blessings, number one, when you recognize God as God. In other words, he says here, God, he's talking to God. He's asking God for blessings. And I'm telling you, the individual that uh, is, the, the individual that will not ask God for blessings puts too much stock in his own supposed ability. I'm telling you, we are dependent, are we not, upon God's blessings. I'm not going to apologize for coming to my Father in heaven. Now, I'm not going to treat Him like a cash register, and I shouldn't treat Him like a butler, and I shouldn't treat Him like some sort of a genie. But I'm telling you, if you come before, if you have a need in your life, there's nobody that can meet your need like God. And if you're saying, oh, I'm not going to God, I'm embarrassed, I'll just depend on myself, you're cutting yourself way short. You're, you're denying yourself what has been freely and liberally given you from God through Jesus Christ for, for you. And so I'm just saying that uh, it's okay to ask God for blessings because it expresses faith in Him when you go to Him for His blessing. And the reason seeking blessings from God sometimes is seen as unspiritual is because we forget who we are and we forget who He is. And I'll hear on TV some preacher demanding that Jesus do this and demanding that God do that. And I'm just saying, that, under, that gentleman doesn't understand who the Father is and he's elevated himself to a position that he ought never be in, that individual has. It's okay to ask God for blessings. It's not wrong. It's not... To, it's not to, uh, being disrespectful. I mean, God knows you and knows what you need. And I'll tell you this, the real sin, the real sin in not asking God for blessings is that we think we don't need His blessings. And so asking God for His blessings is okay because we reckon who He is and His great capacity and we reckon who we are and our inability. And then asking God for blessings is okay because we remember what's most important. Look what he says in verse 1. He says, God, be merciful unto us and bless us. I note that in verse 1, he's asking for spiritual blessings. He doesn't talk about his physical blessing till it gets down to verse 6. God's not offended when we come to him for blessings, especially when we evaluate things like he does. When we come before the Lord and we, 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 scoot, we see our spiritual need as, as immaterial and our spiritual need as insignificant, and all we talk to him about is our physical need, we've got that thing kind of out of order. And it's okay to come to God for blessings when we first of all come recognizing our need for his grace and our need for His mercy. So truthfully, I just want you to know tonight, because here's where you are. We are asking you, as, as, as your pastor is asking you during this missions conference to come before the Lord and ask Him what He wants you to do out of the resources that God has and will give you. And so in doing that, I'm just telling you, you've never given what you could or what you can until you first come to the Lord and seek from Him what He's capable of giving. And so I, I just rejoice tonight that it's okay to go to God in, uh, for blessings as long as we recognize who He is and as long as we recognize our insufficiency. And then it's okay to go for God for, to God for blessings as long as we keep the priorities, the spiritual first and then the, and then the physical. I was in the foyer one day of our church on a Sunday morning service and fellow came out. I can still see him and I could tell you his name. If our world wasn't so little, I would. But uh, he come by and he said, I, and he was a successful businessman, and he said, I told God, and, and he felt like he was saying something pretty admirable. He said, I told God, he says, I told God, God, if you'll take care of me, I'll take care of my business. 
And in his mind, that sounded like a pretty admirable, pretty spiritual Christian thing. But when he left, I thought he's either, he's either ignorant or he's arrogant because nobody can take care of you or the business like God can. I'm just saying to you, it's okay to come before God and ask Him for His blessings as long as we realize who He is and realize that the spiritual is much more important than the physical. Let me give you a second thought to success in God's program. So seeking God's blessings is appropriate and acceptable, but know this, God responds to our request with blessings but they come wrapped in His purpose. Note what He says in verse 2. Now, let's read verse 1 again so we get the, the gist of it. He said, God, be merciful unto us and bless us and cause His face to shine upon us. But then he says in verse 2, and he starts out with a word, and this, is a, this, this first word is an explanatory word. It's a purpose-giving word. He says, that. It's, it's like a hinge. In other words, he said, look, I'm, I'm, this is what I want because. This is what I'm asking you for. This is what I'm going to do with it. He says that. In other words, this is the reason I'm asking you for blessings. This is the reason God's going to give those blessings. That thy way may be known upon earth. Thy saving health among all nations. See, the things God has placed in our lives, you need to understand, we need to understand, they all, they all came to us wrapped in His purpose of His message to the world. In other words, He gave you what you have in your pocket. He gave you what you have in your safety deposit box. He gave you what you have and what you possess, your capabilities, your gifts, your spirit, your possessions, both physical and spiritual. He gave you those that, what did he say? That his way may be known upon earth. That his saving faith, uh, health might be known among all nations. See, there's a picture here. There's a picture of a man in verse 1 coming to God with open hands. And then there's a picture in verse 2 of God filling those hands so that he could take in his, what he was given and give it to the world. He's t- filled his hands. He's come before the Lord. He's recognized God as God. He's recognized himself as needed. He's opened his hand with an expectant look towards heaven. And God has filled his hands so we could take what God has given us and give it to the missionary so he can go to the world. Here's a thought. God gives us what we have been given so we can give to those that He has called, so the called can go to those that God loves. That's it. And if you want to get to heaven and be successful with God, now I'm not, I understand that judgment for the believer as far as condemnation is concerned, that's settled. That was settled on the cross. There's no, that's not an issue. You don't even have to worry about it. Jesus paid it all. But we are going to stand before God as His children and give account. In other words, we came to Him, everything, whether we understood it or not, whether we understood it or not, whether we asked for it or not, everything we have He's given to us so that we can be involved in His plan and His program of getting the message of Christ and the redemption that was provided through Him to this world. The Lord accomplishes two things by filling our hands with spiritual and physical blessings. Number one, making the Lord known among the nation. That's His purpose. That's why He gives us what He gives us. He fills our hands so the message of Christ's redemption can be delivered to the nations of the world. God blesses us physically so we can bless the world spiritually. Do you understand that? He blesses, He fills our hands so we can make the Lord known among the nation. But let me give you another thought, and this might be a thought just maybe by in observation. God blesses us so we can be conformed to His image. 
We already know that's his plan. He tells us that in Romans 8, that he's going to, and we know he's going to work on that until we stand before him and complete that. We will be conformed to his image. But when are you ever more like Christ when your heartbeat is to take all that God has given you and make sure that none of it is separated from God's purpose? I mean, you are most conformed to the image of Christ when your heart beats for the, for the unsaved like Christ's heart beat for the unsaved, to the point that he would say, not my will, but thine be done. I'm just saying to you, God gives us what he gives us, so wrapped in a purpose, his purpose, his purpose of the nation hearing the gospel and his purpose of us being conformed to the image of his Son. So God blesses us in that way. And so, so here we are. Number one, it's, it's okay to ask God for blessings. Don't back up. Don't apologize for asking God for blessings. Number two, He answers our prayer for blessings with blessings wrapped in His purpose. Then number three, know this, the final truth. The time will come when present opportunities to fulfill God's purpose will end. Look what he says in verse 4. He says, Oh, let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for thou shalt judge the people righteously. You know what he's letting us know there, that the time for mercy is now, but the time for mercy will come to a close. I mean, now then, it's okay. It's not, it's, it's, it's good. Don't be apologetic about coming to God and asking for blessings because now God is, His, His mercy flows. His invitation is open. He's, 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 He says, come. But there's coming a time when He's going to say, okay, it's judgment time. And we need to know that. We sometimes live our lives like we have all of our, we have all of eternity to accomplish God's purpose. We don't have all of eternity to accomplish God's purpose. You say, well, well what, what hinders God's purpose being accomplished? You, do, you just need to know this. The time will come when present opportunities to fulfill God's purpose will end. Verse 4 speaks about a time when that the nations have is limited. The times the nations have, the time for mercy that they have is, is limited. Um, I was in Zambia a few years ago, and do you know this was shocking to me? That the average, the, the life expectancy of a Zambian, 53 years. 53 years! That's just shocking to me. That's the life expectancy of someone in Zambia, 50 Three years. Do you, know, you understand the heathen? God didn't put death on hold until they hear. Death comes and continues. And we have the responsibility to get the message of life to the heathen before they die. So the, the time for the heathen is running out. And then I would say this, the time for us to be faithful is limited. The time for us to be faithful is limited. Not, certainly not in regard to condemnation, but I'm just saying to you that, you know, God's given us this time to be saved, and He's given us this time to serve Him. And there's no promise of another time. In other words, God's not going to have a sidebar at the judgment and say, I know you missed your opportunity in that life, so let me give you... And that's just not biblical. That's just not what's going to happen. Missions is a passing opportunity for both the hearers in need and the blessed. And sadly, sadly, some of God's people, some of us, use God's blessings that He gives us to make Him known we use them for our own comfort and for our own relaxation and for our own entertainment. And when we do that, listen to me quickly, we're denying God's purpose in our lives. 
We're denying the nation their opportunity, and we're denying ourselves future blessings from the Lord. Imagine getting to heaven and having been wildly successful at something God just cares little about. I remember hearing the story from Brother Sam Thomas, and he told the story that his dad would tell, having met this particular missionary, that the story was about, if I understand this correctly. But Brother Thomas tells about the, in India, the missionary being uh, on the riverbank, and here comes a woman to the riverbank, and she's carrying a very sickly child and a very healthy child. And she comes to the river's edge where they worship, the, the Indian people worship, and she lays her children down on the sand, one healthy and one very sickly. And just in a moment's notice, she flings the healthy child into a, a crocodile-filled river. And the missionary says, what are you doing? And she said, I'm... I'm I'm honoring and offering to my God. And he says, but not that it matters, but why did you give your healthy, happy, joyful child and not your sick and feeble and dying child? And she explained it this way. I must give my best to my God. I dare not give anything but my best to my God. And the story was, the moral of the story was that she was worshiping the wrong God in the right way. And we sometimes worship the only true God in the wrong way. And God says, look, I, I'm okay. I want you to come to me because you're not doing all you can till you come to me. But what I open up with my, from my hands and give to you, I give to you with the purpose so that the nations can know of my saving health. And I don't give you eternity to get the job done. I'm saying to Trinity Baptist Church tonight that you have an opportunity to... to to serve for 12 months at a level you've never served before. Faith Promise Missions, if I can give you my best illustration of it, is this. Faith Promise Missions, some call it grace giving, but it's like you're going to come before the Lord and you're going to say to the Lord, what do you want from me? And He's going to say to you, I want you to do this, this, and it'll be something that'll demand faith of you. It'll be something that it'll be something of a level that'll demand faith. And so when he tells you you're going to say, "Oh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know that I can." Oh, I, I well, oh, you don't you haven't seen and he said, "I know, just trust me." And it's going to be something that you'll de that'll demand faith. And so what you have the responsibility to do is know that it's okay to ask God for blessings and he's going to give it to you, but he has a purpose of of a providing His message to the world and conforming you to the image of His Son. And you just have 12 months to get it done. And so make that commitment, make that promise and do it. And here's what's going to happen when you do. I can tell you this, I promise you. Here's what's going to happen. You're going to make that commitment and you're going to commit to doing it for 12 months. And, and all every month, the next 12 months that you do that, the devil is going to get between in you and your commitment. He's going to kick up dirt and he's going to fight you and he's going to push and he's going to resist and he's going to make you feel stupid for doing that. But if you'll be faithful for 12 months, all that 12 months, you're going to come back to this time next year and you're going to have to say this, you know what? And I promise you it'll be this way if you'll stay faithful. And I base that not on you, but on God's faithfulness. God will not let you down. God will do what He says He will do. He is ne he's never had a casualty, and you won't be His first one. And so here you are 12 months from now. When He told you what to do, you, it took your breath. And then for 12 months, the devil fought you on it, and now here you are 12 months later, and you say, you know what? We did. We survived. 
We survive. God is faithful. Thank you. And you know what's going to happen? Your faith is going to grow. And then, and, and, and I get a little frustrated with, with some people, and I've never come out, I've never lost the grace to just unload on them, but I get a little frustrated with people who say, oh, I've been given to missions for 20 years, and they're doing the same thing this, the 20th year that they did the first year. And there's a difference. You haven't been given to missions 20 years. You've given to missions one year 20 times, but you're still on that same level as far as knowing what God can do. But if you'll be faithful for 12 months at what God asks you to do, your faith will grow. And 12 months from now, you'll be in the same place and you're saying, what do you want us to do? And he's going to tell you and you're going to say, oh, that's more than last year. Woo, oh, I don't, but you don't know. And he's just trust me. And for 12 months, the devil's going to fight you. But if you'll stay faithful, you'll come back and you'll say, well, <laughs> he did. Even on this level, God is faithful and your faith is going to grow. And then another 12 months later, you're going to find out the same thing, and then God's going to show you again that He is faithful. And then you go on, and that is faith, promise, missions, giving. That is grace giving. And I'm telling you, you ask God for blessings, He's going to open His windows of heaven with blessings, but every one of them is going to come wrapped in a purpose, and you just have a limited time to be faithful with what you've given Him, because judgment's coming on that. 